Fun show today on Lockdown Badgers. We got Keaton Riley, a.k.a. Coach Riley, coming on the show. We're going to talk Jim Leonard, Lance Leopold, Dave Aranda, and what's going on with the offensive line. So we're going to talk all that and more on today's Locked On Badgers. You are Locked On Badgers, your daily podcast on the Wisconsin Badgers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, what is going on, everybody? I am Ryan Herrings, your host of Locked On Badgers, your team every single day. Really, really do appreciate everybody tuning into the show. If you got us on YouTube and you're watching, if you got us on the pod and you're listening, either way, thank you so much for tuning in. We got uh, Coach Riley on Twitter, a.k.a. Keaton Riley, played offensive line at UW-River Falls, contributor to D3Football.com. We got him jumping on the show. Uh, bring him in here. Coach, what's up, man? Thank you for joining the show. Hey, Ryan. Good to have or Good to be on. Thanks for having me on. I'm happy to talk a little Wisconsin here. It's a, it's a good week to talk about Wisconsin. Yeah, there's a few things going on for sure. Um, so I just want to start off with you are at Coach Riley on Twitter. And honestly, one of many really good follows on Twitter, somebody I follow a lot of insightful content. Uh, so I really do encourage everybody who's listening to go check out at Coach Riley, follow him on Twitter, a lot of good Badgers content. And one of the reasons I want to talk to you is I, you kind of aren't in that mainstream content you think for yourself and some of the stuff you put out there has has your flavor to it has kind of your feel to it so like i said i've been wanting to get you on the show for a while i really do appreciate it i want to start here just big picture open up this segment with where are you at right now obviously paul christ is gone jim leonard's the interim coach this season has been frankly a disaster um big picture where are you at right now boy i mean that's a that's a loaded question but i think i think i'm okay i think wisconsin is in a position to maybe have a brighter future than you know what where we're at right now obviously um i don't think anybody's particularly happy that coach chris is gone or how that all unfolded i mean nobody wanted to get her butts kicked by illinois that's not something that anybody thought would happen going into this year but it did happen um i think the writing on the wall for coach chris leaving or being fired i guess quite frankly um, I think it was the writing was on the wall. Um, I, I, I like the opportunity Jim Leonard has. I, I like Jim Leonard as a coach, a good person. It's kind of a breath of fresh air. He's a young guy. He's going to be a little bit more ener energetic than Coach Chris. I mean, that's not saying a ton. Um, but, I mean, the, the only thing that really bums me out is the, the timing of this, being in the middle mm -hmm. of the season. Um, seeing a couple of their players, it was their first media day today um, after the firing, and a lot of those players really wore their emotions on their sleeves. Um, I mean, a guy like Nick Herbig, I mean, it looked like he was fighting back tears, like the whole conversation. Yeah. Well, the, the timing is, is difficult. It really is. Um, now, I, I think Chris is a great person. I think he's a good coach. I think maybe the game, just kind of the development of college football itself is maybe passed him by a little bit. Um, I, I think our scheme schematically has been figured out quite well by different teams and I mean, it seems like every loss that we've had, it's it's the same kind of defense that we're facing, people just loading the box and daring. And I hate to pick on Graham Mertz, but daring Graham Mertz to win the game, and it just doesn't feel like we have rhythm, uh, all those kinds of things. Um, now, what I'm worried about is Jim Leonard's a defense coach, so I don't know how much is going to change in season. Um, but I hope, like, the players that we have now can rally around Jim Leonard. It's a guy that they already know. It's a guy that's probably in their household before and recruiting visits, things like that. I, I hope they can rally around him and we don't see too much fallout towards the end of the year, I mean, you know, transfer portal, those kind of things. But I think overall it's a, it's a bumming thing, but I think we're in an okay position, better position than I think people think we're in. Yeah, I, I think that's an interesting take, a better position than people think we're in, because I think from the outside in, people look at a firing in season and they just assume dumpster fire. Right, but you bring in a guy like Jim Leonard, who is a Wisconsin guy, understands the culture. Not many programs have an internal guy like that. Um, I want to ask you this: Would you have waited to the end of the year? Or uh, you talked about the the one of the tough points of this is the timing, but that doesn't necessarily make it the wrong move. Would you have waited, or do you think after the Illinois game when we ran for two yards that you just had to make a move? And I'm curious because I've I've seen people go both ways on this take. Yeah, and that's a, that's a take I still waffle on, honestly. Um, I like the statement that Wisconsin is making um, in that they're not okay with mediocrity. 
We, we want to be better. We want to forward this program. I really think that's a statement Wisconsin's trying to make. Um, the, the thing that does suck is that this is a passionate group of kids, passionate group of young men. Um, I mean, you, you look at a kid like Braylon Allen. He, he just lost his running back coach last year or maybe yeah. even within 365 days. And obviously that's played a big part in him. And now we've lost Paul Chris in the same year. I mean, this, this is, these are things that are really going to make it a difficult thing for an in season type firing. Um, I would have loved to not get our butts kicked by Illinois. I mean, we, it wasn't close at all. It was a complete whooping. And I mean, this is, you know, Illinois is an improved team, but at the end of the day, they are, not a Rose Bowl bound team. I, I They're would, not that improved. Right, right, yeah. right. I, I think Bielema has obviously done a good job, but this is year two in a rebuild for Illinois, and it, it shouldn't have gone that way. Um, and and I, I guess there are – maybe we don't know the whole dynamics too. Maybe we don't know if this is something that, you know, Chris has been considering for a while. I mean, just – a step down plan, anything like that. We don't know the whole big picture. All we know right now is that they got their butts kicked and then he's fired the next day. Um, I would have, I guess, just to answer your question, um, I would have liked to see him get maybe fired or step down or something at the end of the season. Mm-hmm. The, the problem is that we lost by what, three or four touchdowns to Illinois. And I, I really do think a new athletic director wanted to make a statement and it's what happened. And a big part of it's because we have Jim Leonard waiting. Yeah. I I've gone back and forth on this quite a bit. I've talked to some friends about it. You know, where, where I've ended up coming out on it is I hate it for Paul Christ. So there's two things here. I hate it for Paul Christ. I absolutely hate it because it's got to be embarrassing at a certain level. And that's a dude who gave his heart to Madison. Right. So at that level, I hate it, but to me, it felt really broken. And if you know, something's broken on break it. You know, to the best of your ability, like it gives us an ability to see Jim Leonard for seven games, which I think is really important. I think that matters. And you can't take everything from it, you know, because this is still kind of a broken offense to your point earlier. But it allows us to evaluate Leonard and it allows us to say, OK, we're done and, and kind of quiet all those questions. Because what's going to happen every game the rest of the year if Wisconsin continues to struggle? Every every question is going to be, well, what is Paul Chris doing? What's And it that question was only going to get louder. And I think this answers that question, right? So I I actually, it took me a while to get here. I had to really process it. And like you said, waffle back and forth a little bit on it. I got to the point where I think this was the right move and the right timing. But I still just, I feel terrible for for Paul. Like, I I really do because he's a human and he's a good dude. Um, So that's where I got to. The thing that's really tripping me up with kind of that waffling back and forth is, I mean, this is a guy that 67 and 26 in his career at Wisconsin, I mean, that, that's where a lot of the chirping from other teams, other fan bases, particularly like Nebraska, where they had a similar situation. They let a coach go in the middle of a decent season um, for them um, because they wanted to make the next step. And I, I think Wisconsin has a better plan in place with Jim Leonard already kind of there. Um, but it, it just feels like a, a coach that his worst year besides the COVID year was an eight win year. Mm-hmm. His, his worst year. It just feels like, Maybe he deserved a little better. Uh, but again, we don't know what the conversation was like um, with Chris firing. It, it might have been a somewhat mutual decision. Um, we don't know those kind of things. It's it, it sounds like it was a pleasant conversation if Chris was willing to, I mean, almost take half of the buyout. Um, I, I think that's another topic that could be talked about at length's end. I mean, this guy bleeds Wisconsin football. And that's, he really does. That's really – I'm with you. I feel bad for Paul Chris. This was – He's an alumni, obviously very likely his dream job. He had it. He did well at it. He's just the, – the writing's been on the wall since the end of, what, 2019. Um, things have slipped in a lot of different departments. I think that's really it, right? Like, because we, we were doing a live show. Justin Joko was on the show a lot, talked about – or maybe he did it in the comments, I forget. But he talked about, you know, the gridiron club's gone. The spring game's gone. The, it took a year to fill the recruiting department, Right. There was um, there's a lack, a noticeable lack of kind of hype and energy around the program. And by the way, we're in an era where you have to sell your program more than ever. Like NIL is a thing. Getting boosters to put money into the program is a thing. Like getting recruits is a thing. And that takes some energy. And it's two straight recruiting classes that have been down. I think it's a culmination of all of these things, right? It's a constellation of data points that have painted a trend line that 
quite frankly, has been bad. Um, coming up, I want to keep you on the show. Really appreciate your insight. I want to talk to you about Jim Leonard and a couple of the other candidates and see maybe not even power rank them, but where you want Wisconsin to push towards. And maybe is Jim Leonard the guy from your, your opinion and insight. So we want to keep you on the show. Talk about that next. Uh, today's show is brought to you by our friends at Upside. So we have all felt this. Unless you are independently wealthy, you know, you go to the pump, you cringe a little bit, you go to the restaurant, you spend a little bit more. Inflation, for all the reasons that that it is, has really hit our wallets hard, right? And it, we're paying more at the restaurant. I went out to, we have this Mexican joint down the road. Uh, it's really good fresca. I always get these uh, incredible nachos. We're now spending like 80 bucks as a family to get uh, this this food that a couple years ago was probably 60 like it hurts. And it's one of the reasons I started using Upside. Upside gives you free cash back for all the normal things you spend money on in real life. It's an app. You download it. Use our promo code LOCKED and you get $5 or more cash back in your first purchase of $10 or more. You claim an offer whenever you're doing it. You just go in. You buy like you normally would. You check in on the app and you get free cash back for doing all the things you normally do. It is not too good to be true. It's incredibly easy to use and you can earn three times more cash back with Upside they need to do a typical credit card reward program. So this is a great way just to get some cash back in your wallet. You know, buy some Badger Swag with it. Listen, um, you see the bare walls back here. I need to get some Badger Swag up. I'm going to use my Upside app to kind of do that. Download the free Upside app, promo code LOCKED to get $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more. That's $5 or more cash back on your first purchase, $10 or more. That's promo code LOCKED. I want to thank everybody again for tuning into Lockdown Badgers, your team every day. And again, our community has continued to build. I am so grateful for everyone. And it's because of people like Coach Riley coming on the show. It's because of, of Mike and Scott and Justin and Dylan when we've had him on. All the people we've had on, John Garcia, Jason Jordan, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and just so grateful for everyone tuning in and listening to the show. Your team every day. Uh, we're going to keep Coach Riley back on the show. I We've seen Coach Big Boards, right? Coaching Big Boards. And they go like 10 deep, 12 deep. Like it's all these names. And I just feel like this is a three three person race unless something absolutely crazy happens that I this is only my opinion, but it's to me, it's Jim Leonard in the pole position, then it's Leipold and then it's Aranda. I, I just I can't see it being anyone outside of those three. Um, I kind of want to start there with you. Is that how you're kind of handicapping this thing? I think you're muted, bud. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah, no, no worries. Got gotcha. you. The, these are the three names that we've heard. I, I know we've heard other names, but it just seems kind of silly to think of other names right now because we don't have any merit to them right now. A lot of these coaches are in the middle of their own seasons. Um, I think if we just focus on Jim Leonard, uh, Dave Aranda, and, and Lance Leipold, I think out of those three, I think there's three good candidates for sure. Um, personally, I, I'm super interested to see what Jim does. Um, at, at the same time, I don't know how much is going to change because he's already said that he's going to keep calling defensive plays. Um, he, he, he said that he believes his staff if they need to call plays and he needs to do other duties, but obviously he's a good defensive caller. He's, he's, he's proven that for years now. Um, offensive end. I don't know what is going to change. You, you remove Paul Chris. We still have Bobby Ingram. We don't really know what his role has been for calling plays. We think he's been co-playing or co-calling with Paul Chris. That's what we assume anyways. There hasn't really been a tough question that's been asked to Paul Chris, like what is what, what who's calling the plays? Nobody's really asked that yet. Um, so I don't know how much Jim Leonard can change or prove if he needs to prove anything in these seven weeks. I, I don't know. And I don't think that should necessarily negate his ability to lead the program going forward. I think he's the clear front runner. He's a Wisconsin guy. He, like Chris, he bleeds Wisconsin. He says all the right things. He knows the players. Um, it, it seems like the players are as passionate to play for Jim Leonard as they are Paul Christ. I think just right now, I would be surprised if he's not the guy moving forward. But at the same time, why didn't they just announce that then? Um, probably because probably they don't have to would be my take on it. Like, Because what if you announce it and the bottom falls out? I mean, I don't know how much worse. Listen, how much worse are you going to get? Right then, losing thirty-four to ten to Illinois. What was it, thirty-one to ten or thirty-four to ten? My brain has blocked that out already. But you just got your butts kicked by Illinois. Can't get that much worse. But I would assume, just in case the bottom falls out, right? That's why you, you don't announce it. And if, if Leonard is the guy, then I and I and I totally get that point. The the thing that bugs me at the interim tag is the recruiting department. 
Yeah. You're basically freezing that recruiting department in a class that Wisconsin's already struggling in right now. Um, they struggled last year's class. They're struggling this year's class. And doing an interim tag is is not going to help that at all. Um, no, that's, but, a, that's a great point. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, moving on to like Dave Aranda, I think he's a great coach. Uh, he's another defensive minded guy. That's where I'm a little hesitant. We, we've got a defensive guy already. We've, we've got Jim Leonard and people talk about these big ties to Wisconsin. He's, he only coached at Wisconsin two or three years. It's right. not, like, it's not like he's a Wisconsin guy. He he's from California. Um, it's, it's, I mean, these are things that aren't talked about because they hear Dave Rendo. Oh, he's doing very well at Baylor. His recruiting classes also have been pretty suspect. And I, and I know he's, coaching for the what fourth most popular team in, in Texas. So his ceiling there is, is quite lower than maybe like Wisconsin would have. Um, but, but obviously a lot more talent in Texas too. So I don't know, right. It's hard to say, like if you're the fourth most popular team in Texas and now we're kind of getting off on tangent, but you probably still have access to more in state talent than Wisconsin does. Yeah. And that, that's a totally different tangent for me because I do think there's a big discrepancy between four-star Texas players versus mm -hmm. four-star Midwest players. I think, I mean, obviously they're different scouts. There's different sure. there's difference. Yeah. And that's a whole different thing. Um, but my, my big thing with Dave Aranda is one, he's already making more money than Paul Chris did. It's going to take a pretty good check to hire a guy like Dave Aranda. We're talking, I mean, I think he makes like six, maybe seven mil right now. Paul Chris made in the fives. Mm -hmm. um, so to lure him from a Baylor, it's going to take a, a good amount of money. Um, I don't think that kind of money is growing on trees in Wisconsin after they just paid eleven million to Paul Christ. Yeah, that's a great point. Um, then again, Wisconsin just shocked the crap out of us by firing a coach mid mid season. So this is really uncharted territory for Wisconsin. I just wanted to say that too because usually Wisconsin for the last twenty years have been so predictable in pretty much everything. Um, and I mean, people, I don't know people like to make fun of it on Twitter, like, Oh, fire Chris, all this and that. It, it actually happened. It, it's just, I, I, I'm still trying to wrap my mind around that. You um, and everybody else. Yeah. Yeah. So the Dave Aranda thing is, it would, would be a great hire. I don't know if I really buy that he would leave Baylor um, unless he gets a considerable pay raise, which he's already making quite a bit of money. Um, and I'm, I mean, he would leave Baylor, but I, I don't think Wisconsin's going to be the only one knocking on his door either. Uh, you're talking about another, I mean, you're talking about a blue chip program in Nebraska and they, they, they want to get mm -hmm. as flashy of a name as possible there. They, and Auburn's they, probably opening up, you know, there's, there's some schools that are going to open up that are also going to be really good jobs. Right. And, and I guess I just wanted to defute the point that Dave Aranda has these huge Wisconsin ties when he, he was only a coach here for two, three years. Um, yeah, and he's he's not from Wisconsin. Um, I would be, I think it's more of a two horse race between Lance and Jim Leonard at this point, um, and just because we haven't really heard any of other names or any other progress mm -hmm. in names. Um, but Lance is it's its own kind of deal. I think that would be a home run hire. I, I really do. I think Lance is a great coach. He's developed every level he's been at. Um, UW Whitewater wasn't so much of a powerhouse when he got there. He won six national championships. I mean, I think that doubles what Bull Ryan won when he was in D3. Um, I, he went to Buffalo and completely turned that program around. Yep. And now he's at Kansas, and we all know what he's doing at Kansas. I, We all thought, I mean, everybody thought that that is a completely dead-end job, unwinnable in Kansas. Nobody can win in Kansas. Here he is, 5-0. Game day, ranked. Yeah. Right. It's, it's just unbelievable. Um, I don't know what his ties are to Kansas. I don't know how much he loves Kansas. I don't know any of that stuff. Um, but I do know that his development of every level is incredible. And he hasn't had the chance to recruit like Wisconsin, I mean, top 50 classes. He's coached at Buffalo and Kansas. He's so, I mean, he's taking two, three stars at max and really maximizing their potential like Wisconsin used to do. I mean, they've struggled at it late, with it lately, and that's part of the reason we are in the situation that we are. But in that reason, I think Lance would be a home run hire. He's obviously a great developmental coach. 
Um, the thing that worries me with Lance is it's, it's Big Ten football. It's, it is a different breed. Um, the recruiting really does matter here. Um, you know, the last thing you want to do is, is lose kind of in-state talents to like a Minnesota who's up and coming or even in Illinois. Mm -hmm. These are things that Wisconsin has typically done really well is close down their borders to players that fit their system. I'm not talking about the kids from, you know, like a spread offense in Milwaukee. Those kids usually go, and that's understandable. It's, Wisconsin has a brand. Um, I think Lance would be great. I really do. Um, he's another guy who's going to get a ton of offers, though. And, do you worry about his age? And I, I only ask that because people – I think people are worried about let's say you let's say you target Lance, right? You get him. Um, he's almost 60, I believe. I think I believe he's 58, 59. Um, and then by doing so, you lose out potentially in the chance of Jim Leonard. Because I think if Jim Leonard doesn't get this job, I don't think he's staying as a defensive coordinator. First of all, I think Lance would bring his own guy, Borland. Um, but I don't I just don't think Leonard would stay after getting passed up. So potentially you're passing up on the chance of a potential great head coach. We don't know with Leonard. Right. But you're passing up on that chance to take a guy who I mean, how many more years are you coaching if you're 59? You know, yeah. I, I think I that's the risk with, people see. I think Jim Leonard for sure is gone if he's not the head guy. Mm -hmm. He's gotten plenty of offers elsewhere. Um, we've heard about offers for Green Bay. I mean, he's got offers everywhere. He, You know, um, the, I think the age thing is important, but we got to understand Wisconsin – really with the talent level that they have shouldn't be that far away from being able to contend for big 10 West championship. They, mm -hmm. It shouldn't take a complete rebuild. And if you're expecting a complete rebuild, you don't want to hire somebody that's 59 years old. You don't because in all likelihood, he's probably got at maximum 10 years of coaching left. Um, so if, if, if you are hiring a coach right now to win now, I don't think Lance's age necessarily factors into that. Um, but I mean, it, it's, it's one of those double-edged swords. You want to win right now, but you also want longevity in the program. And if you hire a guy like Jim Leonard, if all things go well, he could be the coach here for a good long time. Right. If he hits, you get both, right? You, you can win now with him and he's your guy for the next 20 years. Right. And that, and that's important for stability. It is. We, we, we see a lot of programs that lose coaches, um, all over the country that'll be really good one year and then they're down and then they hire a good coach and then they're up again. And Wisconsin has been one of, if not the most stable programs in, in the nation. They, they have this situation that we're in right now. We haven't been in this situation since the nineties. I mean, yeah. it, it's, I mean, I guess maybe Gary Anderson, right. Maybe after he left kind of in the middle of the night, you know, I guess you were there, but he wasn't certainly fired in the middle of a season. Like this is, this, this is, it is unprecedented for Wisconsin. Yeah. And I think that's where a lot of the panic is from like Twitter or Facebook or there, there's a lot of panic. There's a lot of people thinking this is the end of Wisconsin football, um, things like that. And, and that's where I get to the point where Wisconsin's in better shape than we think. Yeah. So Leonard, by all accounts should be a capable head coach. I mean, he's, he's had success at, at every coaching position he's had ultimately led him up to D coordinator and he's been one of the best in the country. I don't have any doubts that he has the ability to be a successful head coach. I don't, but again, it's, it's going to have to take some good hires, offensive assistant coaches, things like that. It's going to be a big part of his success. Yeah. He would have to, and I wonder if that was part of the conversation. We'll never know. Right. With, with uh, McIntosh talking about, you know, in the off season or it, it, it probably didn't get there, but in the back of his head, you know, he's, he has to know that he has to revamp the offensive side. Like, it can't remain status quo. Um, I want to finish here on the coaching stuff, and then I want to get to offensive line and just talk to you a little bit about our offensive line and what you've seen there. But kind of really quickly, let's say Jim Leonard finishes the season and does reasonably well. And I, I put some metrics out, but reasonably well means maybe like 500. Penalties go down. The team sticks together, right, plays clean ball. And I think you can – kind of evaluate Jim Leonard on in-game decision-making, those kind of big, bigger picture things, right? Let's say he does okay there. The end of the season comes, and you have to make a decision as Wisconsin Athletic Director. I'm promoting you. I'm putting you in that spot. Would you still go after Lance Leipold because you know that he can be a head coach? Or at that point, do you just think Jim Leonard has proven it every step of his career? He finished his season out reasonably well. 
or not going to roll the dice? I think you do your due diligence. I think, you know, you, you, you have an interview with Lance again, he's going to be probably costly because he's going to have a lot of offers and specifically mm -hmm. Nebraska, who as a program has a lot of money to offer, you know, and the, the last thing Wisconsin wants to do is be publicly about a bidding war with Lance Leopold if they're debating Jim Leonard. So I think they do their due diligence, have a first interview with a bunch of different candidates. I really do. Otherwise, why would they have the interim tag right now? But I do think if, you know, if things stay together, if the bottom doesn't fall out, if the way you put it, I think Jim is probably the, the decision moving forward. Um, and I'm only basing it off of because it's what Wisconsin does. They hire Wisconsin guys. They are conservative with their hiring. They've got a guy that's capable there right now. Um, <laughs> and I say that, and again, this is a brand new athletic director, though, who yeah. just made a move that we never thought would happen. It so, might not be so conservative anymore, right? Like, it's yeah. funny because – I'm right there with you. They are conservative, and yet they just fired a head coach, you know, a third yeah. of the way through the season. So it is kind of wild. And I am completely surprised by the Paul Chris firing. I would be even more surprised at this point right now if Jim Leonard wasn't the guy moving forward. It's I would just, agree. I'm, it's just kind of where I'm at with my head right now. But, again, this is <laughs> such uncharted territory that we really have no idea other than guesses right now. Yeah, I, I would agree with you there. Uh, we're going to wrap up with one more segment with Coach Riley. We're going to talk offensive line a little bit, something that he has a lot more experience with than I do. That's coming up next on Locked on Badgers. I want to thank everybody for tuning in to Locked on Badgers. Once again, uh, your show every day, your team every day. We're here to build up that community. Uh, coach Riley's a big part of that community, obviously. Um, I want to give you uh, a chance here, Coach. Where can people find you? Where can they follow you? Uh, anything you have going on on social media that people can reach out to and see what you're up to? Sure. People can be, you know, follow me on Twitter at Badgers Riley. Um, yeah. Happy to be a part of the Badgers community. I oh, love it, man. Let, let's talk offensive line. Um, coming off a game where Wisconsin ran for two yards against Illinois and, you know, rushing quarterback sacks are included in that, but it, two yards is two yards, right? Wisconsin currently ninth in the big 10 in rushing yardage, seventh in yards per carry. Why has the offensive line underperformed and, I gotta tell you, before I even before you even get to that point, that the the argument that teams are just stacking the box doesn't work because teams have been stacking the box for 15 years against Wisconsin. Something else is happening here. What have you seen? What kind of insights do you have? <laughs> it's 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 hard to figure out, especially when you look at the talent that they have right now. Uh, I mean, Jack Nelson's great. He's he's been good. Mm -hmm. He's still young though. I mean, he's a sophomore. Tyler, Tyler Beach has been probably their most consistent lineman right now. He's he's the one senior on the team or the on the starting squad anyways right now at left guard. He's been pretty good too. Um, Joe Tipman is a guy that should absolutely be a mauler. He's a four-star recruit. I don't know. I don't know what it is with him. He's a six foot five guy trying to play center. I don't know if it's maybe his natural position. Um, but he just he he's not he, he doesn't look like he should. He, he's not. And I say this because we've been really blessed with really good centers. You know, mm -hmm. we, I mean, we just came off of Biotis, who obviously is playing on Sundays for the Cowboys. And the, the drop-off from Biotis to Tittman has, has been noticeable. And I, he's not the only one. We're, we're talking about Tanner Bordellini. He's a, a guy that, you know, development is good, but he's maybe a guy that is on the lower end of the recruitment spectrum. He's maybe a guy that they shouldn't be expecting to be one of their best mm -hmm. linemen. Uh, but here he is. And then they got Riley Mullman, who was a freshman. And when he played in high school, and, and I know this because I'm from Minnesota, I, I, I know the Lake Phillies. He played tight end in high school. So, I mean, literally the first time he's playing offensive line is last year when he redshirted. So for, for him to be in the starting role, I, I think that speaks to, one, that he's good, and, two, where's everybody else? There, there's right. why isn't the competition. The depth isn't there. I think that is playing a big role in Wisconsin right now. The depth is not it's, – it's just not where it should be. I mean, if a guy is struggling, they should be able to put somebody new in that does pretty well. Um, and, and we just learned that with Trey Wedding. I mean, he's he did really well um, mm -hmm. when he was forced into playing. Um, but, you know, I, I think Wisconsin gets these the, this attitude that everybody's just a big mauler. You, you look at the starting line right now, I see – 
Nelson, I see Beach, and I see Mallman. Those aren't guys that are maulers. They're more on the uh, light-footed kind of finesse guys. I mean, obviously not the best footwork in the world, but they're not the guys that are going to go and win every single block, push the guy five yards down the field. It's just not who they are. Interesting um, take, yeah. Yeah, and, and, and I think another cause con- for concern, I mean, Logan Brown, what, what happened? I that I think the development of Wisconsin, of the offensive line is is really suspect right now, and I don't know if this was a Joe Rudolph thing. I don't know, I don't know what um, exactly what went wrong with the development. We're not there. We're not behind the scenes. I know I've seen people trying to blame the strength and conditioning coach. I I, I don't buy that at all. It, it's just I, I think uh, another part that I haven't mentioned yet. These are a lot of guys that have played a lot of different positions before finding mm-hmm. where they are on the line. And that is not as easy as it looks from offensive line. I, there's, We just heard this with the Green Bay. I mean, they want a left tackle to move the right tackle because it's, you know, no big deal. That 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 thinking is false. It It is not as easy as it looks to move from guard to center, or from center to tackle. It It's a completely different position. Yeah, that's really, that's really interesting because we've talked for a long time about the philosophies of, of Joe Rudolph, Bob, Bob Bostead, and Rudolph really flipped his guys around a lot because he wanted versatility, right? He wanted to be able to have players that can swing all over the place in case of injuries. And certainly, listen, there's, there is value there, but for a long time, and I'm not saying this because of how things worked out, for a long time, I've argued players need more reps with where they're going to be. You have If you're going to be a tackle – having them have some value at guard is not more valuable than, than getting all those reps at tackle. And I think to your point that that's kind of what we've seen, like the players haven't specialized as much as they used to. I mean, yeah, you're talking about like a Tanner Borderline. He's, he's played about every position on the line. Um, Tyler beach was left tackle last year. I mean, mm-hmm. really it's, it, it feels like they're trying to throw darts in a dartboard to see what works. And my concern with that is if you if if you've got a butt kicking center, you're not going to try to play him anywhere else. The, the 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 concern for versatility just isn't there because you want him in his best position. Mm-hmm. And this is, I mean, the whole versatility thing is something that we didn't start seeing until what last year when we started rotating a one and two line, and we did not see that at Wisconsin for a long time. I mean, maybe ever. Yeah, not it was. I think it was the last couple of years with Rudolph is when he started. I mean, you would see even early in last year, last year's season, in early parts of the game, you know, the entire second string almost offensive line would come out after the first string, and I just I remember losing my mind in those points because this, this just doesn't make sense. If they're your best linemen, don't take them out because they had a bad play. Like you're playing that it, it felt very result oriented and not process oriented. And then with a guy like Logan Brown, like I. I just, he just doesn't have it at tackle. Like he's not fat. His, his footwork isn't isn't quick enough to handle those rushers. I actually think I want to get your take on this, and we got to wrap up here pretty soon because um, I've already kept you for beyond thirty minutes, uh, which I'm very appreciative. By the way, I think Logan Brown should be a guard. Like to me, because I feel like at the point of attack he moves people, but he struggles on the edge. But that's I'm curious what your take is on that. I completely agree, and I, I think that's more to that. We've got. Moleman, who's a right tackle, is a freshman. <laughs> we have Jack Nelson, who's a sophomore left tackle. Where are you fitting Logan Brown in? If, you know, those mm-hmm. those guys don't seem to be giving up that spot, barring an injury. So and where Trey are Wedding. they? Wedding you, as well, you, young player at right tackle when moleman has been out. Don't forget about Nolan Rucci right there, too. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, it's where are you fitting Logan Brown? He's been passed up a few times now. And it. I would be – I mean, left guard next year is a huge question mark with Beach – leaving I, i'm just surprised with all the talks of versatility why, why haven't we seen logan brown at guard it, it, it's i don't know if it's a question of his strength at guard because at guard you do need quite a bit more mm-hmm. i don't know strength than maybe a tackle just you, you're there's more concern of actually moving your guy at, at guard than there is tackle um I, i'm just i don't know what why they haven't tried him at guard and that that alone concerns me with it yeah, that's a good point. There very well could be a reason that hasn't happened yet. Because obviously I'm looking from the outside in, and to your point, we don't see what's going on behind the scenes there. Uh, maybe it's something they tried in a, a practice that was close to the media, and it just, for me, whatever reason it was, didn't work. That's certainly possible. Um, Coach, I want to finish up here. 
because again, I've kept you for 35 minutes. Really, really do appreciate it. Uh, we're going to put all your contact info in the show notes so people can follow you. Definitely somebody I follow, like really insightful dude. I highly, highly encourage go out on Twitter, follow him. We're going to keep having him on the show if he's willing. I, I want to wrap up here. How do you see the Northwestern game going? Like just in a big picture, is this a game where Wisconsin is distracted? Because we've seen teams, I don't want to say fold under turmoil, but like we've seen teams get distracted, not be able to figure it out, and it just the season down, just downward spiral. But we've also seen like some teams, new coach energy, play for something. You know, this could go in a couple different ways. I'm curious where you see this weekend playing out. I was just looking at the line of this game. I think yesterday and it was Wisconsin was a 10 point favorite or mm. something like that. Uh, I don't even like that with peak Wisconsin. That's a lot of points North, in Northwestern. At Northwestern. Uh, it's a house of horrors for us. It really is. Mm -hmm. um, just reading and just watching the videos and reading the comments of Badgers players. I really think that this firing might actually be a little bit of a, momentary benefit it, it sounds like they're fired up i've heard a lot of the seasons for paul christ we want to play for paul christ I, I hear a lot of that um the thing that concerns me a little bit is all right who who steps up in paul christ's absence on the offense and i get maybe paul christ wasn't the best offensive coach and i get that but he still played a role so who is stepping into that role um that's where i'm a little concerned um playing at northwestern is always hard and Northwestern mm -hmm. is very down right now. I would, I think this is a winnable game for sure. You know, I, I don't, there aren't many, I don't know, I don't think there's any guaranteed win left in the, in the season, not at all. Um, but if, if Northwestern is winnable, then they, they've got to, they got to rally around the whole Paul Chris firing. If they are distracted in the least bit, it's, it probably won't be pretty. I mean, we just saw Illinois smack us and i mean <laughs> i don't yeah. know how much better they are than northwestern really or you know and i mean i think defensively they're quite a bit better they run the ball better but to your the, the to the first point we talked about illinois is not that not illinois is not playing for a title here like you know i would say this if if it goes poorly this weekend like, because this should be the rallying cry game right and maybe the springboard to a lot of better things coming up this year if it goes poorly this weekend the season's going to get really ugly, in my opinion. Yeah, and I think uh, if if you lose this weekend, you look at the schedule. I don't. Uh, it's hard to put them as a favorite anywhere. And it, yeah, they, they won't be a favorite in East Lansing. They won't be favorite in Kinnick. They won't be a favorite against uh, Minnesota. Maybe, maybe Purdue. Maybe Nebraska. Like at that point, those are kind of coin flip games. But it could get really ugly, man. And, and even Nebraska looked improved last week. Mm -hmm. uh, they had some new coach energy, right? Yeah, that's what I'm hoping Wisconsin can tap into a little bit. Um, and I, I, I'm friends with a lot of Nebraska fans. I follow a lot of Nebraska people. It, it didn't sound like as an emotional exit for Nebraska players. The writing on the wall for that firing was for, yeah. for months, weeks. I mean, a couple of years even. This was so abrupt and quick. Um, it, it is a completely different emotional um, basis that our players will be going than Nebraska went through. Um, that being said, Nebraska has a guy in house that's a Nebraska guy, just like Wisconsin has a guy that's a Wisconsin guy. It's a good point. Um, I think uh, I would like to see some more energy from on the sidelines from Jim Leonard. I know it's not really his thing to be an emotional guy, but he's shown that he can. You know, he's he's gotten after it a few times on the sideline. They've shown it before where I don't know if I really saw much of that from Chris. It's just not his MO. It's not who he is, and that and that's fine. But I hope some of that energy can be infused into the players. And, again, just that rallying, this is for Coach Chris' season. Yeah, I can't wait, man. I'm, I'm really excited for a bunch of reasons. Um, Coach, Mr. Coach Riley, thank you so much for jumping on the show. I uh, hope to get you back on. I know you're on the Discord. Uh, I hope people go out there and follow you on Twitter. For everyone listening, uh, thank you so much for tuning in. On Wisconsin, we're going to talk to you again tomorrow. A bunch more content coming up. I should have a crossover show with the Locked On Northwestern guy, Carter Bird, tomorrow. So we're going to talk Wisconsin Northwestern in a little more detail. A bunch of basketball stuff coming up. I keep saying it. This week was going to be more of a basketball week, and then we know what happened. So all that's coming up on Wisconsin. Uh, talk to you tomorrow. Thank you so much, Coach Riley. And uh, let's, beat, let's beat the Cats.